first story. My affair partner's kids caught us and gave him an ultimatum to choose me or them. I'm afraid I would lose him. I 35F have been with my SO40M for four years. I'm going to admit beforehand that we had an affair, and he left his wife to be with me. There's not a day that goes by that we don't regret what we've done. His kid's son 20 and daughter 18 haven't met me, but they know of me. He personally went to confess to BM, and to his kids who were 16 and 14 at the time. They were shattered when they found out. They told so that they would never want me a part of their lives, and should continue to see me. He'd lose them forever. We thought that over time, and by only spending time with their dad, their position would soften, but they'd still be just as angry as before. I've also personally emailed them, apologizing to them about the hurt that I've caused, and assuring them that I would never come between them and their dad, and should they ever be open to the idea of meeting, I'd be open to it. I'm a widow, and have a daughter, whom I've been raising alone for eight years. He's great with my 14-year-old daughter, and she adores him. When he told them about us getting married, they told him, should he go through with it, he'd be dead to them, and he would only be a father to my daughter after the wedding day. He's heartbroken by this. We're both convinced that they'll follow suit with their threat as well. We are supposed to get married at the end of the month. But he's starting to second-guess himself and question whether or not he can go through with it. We're at a loss as to what to do. I know he doesn't want to lose his kids. They are in their prime years, and he wants to be a part of their lives. I also don't want to come between him and his kids, and losing them would probably destroy him. I know what we did was horrible, and not a day goes by where we don't think about it. Commenter. That's a valid feeling they have, honestly. It sounds like they have felt this way from the beginning, and it's up to him to choose. If your daughter's dad had cheated and broke y'all up, would you be okay with her dad choosing his lover over her? Would that hurt you to know his lover and her kid were more important than his child's feelings? OP, I agree. We both thought that over time, they would begin to soften. We made a terrible mistake, and we both feel terrible over it. My daughter would probably feel the same as his kids if her dad did the same. I wish I would take it back. Honestly, I wish I could. Update. We're over. FDH asked his kids to go to dinner with him on Tuesday to see where their heads were. When he came home, he seemed off and distant for a few days. I figured he needed some space. Last night, after my daughter went to bed, we got to talking. FDH told me that he's apologized to them for what they've done, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to make amends. His daughter asked him if he's still going to get married to me, but he tried to keep the topic of them. Both of his kids broke down. His daughter said that he's more than willing to be a dad to my daughter than to her. His son then goes on to say that he's pushing them away from him. They want to trust him. They want to fix their relationship with him, but knowing that he comes home to me is what's stopping them from trusting him. His son feels that they're not close anymore, and it's hurting them that they can't come to him anymore. His daughter goes on to say these past four years have been hell for her. They both feel that he put me and my daughter above them. I can't imagine how that was for him. Hearing that your kids can't trust you because of your partner. I felt terrible. Guess FDH knows their stance, and he chose them. I have to agree with one of the comments to my previous post. They are giving him another chance to prove they come first, and he should take it. And he took it. It was one of the most heartbreaking experiences. I know it's not compared to what BM and the kids felt when he confessed about having an affair. I returned his wedding ring to him, and he's looking for a place. I've been an emotional pile of goo since last night. Today, he moved his stuff into the guest bedroom and is actively searching for a place. I just wish I could just apologize to BM and to these kids in person. But I know that will never happen. Second story. Coward father wanted to ruin an important day for his youngest daughter. But OP barged into his house and got her, so I need to give some background. My husband 37M and I 37F have been divorced for six years now. We have two daughters, Emily 16F and Gaby 8F, and were happily married for 10 years. My husband cheated on me with a freshman in college and left me for her. It was hard for me. I was in so much emotional pain. It wasn't just his cheating, but also how he said he hated me, and that I looked ugly. He even said something on the line like, I was not as tight as I used to be. You can imagine my pain. It gave me some serious trust issues. I couldn't forget what he said to me during our divorce. Emily knew why we divorced, and she held some resentment towards her father for that. Gaby was too young at that time. Nonetheless, he was a shy husband, but a good father to both of them. We shared custody. The girls would be with me from Friday to Monday. I tried my best, but from time to time, I would spiral. I have been in and out of therapy since my divorce. 
I met my now husband Ben 41 and four years ago. We met because we worked in the same building, and I was crying on the roof of the office building. Ben was there too when he saw me. He asked me what happened, and I just bawled my eyes out because that day was my wedding anniversary. And that was the same day my ex decided that he would get married to his affair partner. Ben listened to my concerns and stayed with me the whole day to make sure I was fine. He even dropped me off at my house because I was too emotionally unstable to drive myself. From there, we started dating. He told me his story about how he lost his wife and only daughter 10 years ago in a car accident. He was really fond of my daughters as well. Emily has started to call him dad after a year of us dating. Gaby also calls him Daddy Ben. I was finally healing and getting back to my old self. Ben was really nice and caring. We welcomed our son a year ago. My girls are happy to have a brother. He proposed to me when I was pregnant, and we have been planning for our wedding since then. Now, here is the issue. Emily is one of my bridesmaids. Gaby is my flower girl. Emily is old enough to choose which parent she wants to live with, so there was no issue on her part. But Gaby was still going back and forth from my house to my ex's house. My wedding is in two weeks. My ex was fine with it. I spoke to him many times to make sure that he drove Gaby to my mother's place. But now he refuses. He says that he only gets to see his daughter three times a week, and he is not willing to give up his days for some party. I told him he could take my days for a week and let her be at the wedding. He says he will not let Gaby go. The wedding is on a Tuesday, which means Gaby will be with him. I cannot change the date because everything is booked. Please give me some advice. We have argued a lot, and I don't think I can go through any emotional pain with this ever again. Gaby would be heartbroken because she is really excited to be a flower girl. Update. It's been hectic since the last time I posted. So I mentioned in my last post that my ex-husband, with whom I share two children, Emily and Gaby, lives with me now, but occasionally goes to her father's place. I made that post on a Wednesday. I went on Friday to pick up Gaby. My daughter, Emily, was pissed. I asked her what happened. She says that Gaby was throwing a tantrum because of some stupid lie. Their father has told Gaby that they will be going on vacation on my wedding day. Gaby said no. She was excited to be my flower girl and threw a tantrum. I was furious. This cowardly man wanted to take my daughter away from me so that she would never be my flower girl. I stomped my way into his house and demanded to see my daughter. My fiancé was with me. I demanded to see my daughter and said that he was a coward for not telling my daughter the real reason why she couldn't be at my wedding. My daughter rushed towards my fiancé Ben. I told him to tell Gaby the truth. I was done with this man. I told him if he doesn't tell her I will. I had the screenshots on my phone. I am surprised that he caved. Eventually, he told her the truth. Gaby was crying and saying that she hated him. My ex-husband was not having it. She took Gaby away from Ben, violently shaking her body and calling her a brat who doesn't appreciate her dad. I don't know what came to me. I saw Red and pushed my husband out of the way. He called me a BTCH, and his wife came out and tried to handle him. I got my daughter Gaby, but my husband wasn't letting me. He even got into a physical altercation with my fiancé. Emily was recording it from a distance. My ex kept shouting that he would not let my daughter go with him. I reminded him that this is my turn to have her. And he agreed that he would let my daughter stay with me until the wedding was over. I have the message with me that he agreed to our agreement. He couldn't do anything, and we left. Upon arriving, Emily asked me if it was possible to keep Gaby with us forever, because she did not want to live with her dad. I asked why. Then she told me that her dad has been really angry ever since we started a relationship. It wasn't that extreme at first. Then he started insulting me behind my back about how much I downgraded by dating Ben. He got even more agitated when he learned I was pregnant. He has been asking his wife to start having kids, and they have had fights multiple times. It doesn't end there. Emily also mentions that he would often lash out at Gaby and even scold her for making small mistakes. He even forced both of them to call his wife mom. But Emily refused. She also said the only reason she ever goes back is because she knows Gaby has to stay with him, and she is just protecting her. I cried and asked her why she didn't tell me. She responded that she saw how happy I was with Ben, so she didn't want to burden me. I don't know what to say. I never wanted my daughter to take on the burden. While I am happy that she tried to protect her sister, I feel disappointed in myself that I was so busy with my new life that I neglected my daughter. Whenever they came home, they were smiling, and I took that as a sign that everything was okay. I told Emily that I was proud of her, but she should have told me otherwise. She should have never taken it upon herself to save Gaby. I am their mother, and I will protect them from everything.
I was going to let my daughter stay with my ex when I was on my honeymoon, so that he would not cry about not spending enough time with his daughters. Now I am thinking otherwise. I don't know what to do. I am really stressed, and next week is my wedding. Any suggestions? Update. Hello guys, I took your suggestions and filed for emergency custody. I have also contacted a lawyer so that I can get full custody of Gaby. My daughter, Emily, is a key witness, and she does have the video saved. She is a smart girl. I am glad she saw the tension in the air and recorded it. I gave this to my lawyer. He did say I shouldn't have jumped on my ex, but it can be played as self-defense because he was hurting and scaring Gaby. I was able to get emergency custody. I was lucky that I got it in such a short time. I will talk to my lawyer about full custody in detail. He said that given how he acted and the video evidence, along with the statement from Emily, I do have a strong case. But I know my ex. He will not give it up so easily. But neither am I. I am postponing my honeymoon until this matter is resolved. Even though this whole week has been stressful for me and everyone, I managed to cheer up Gaby. My family was really supportive. We did have a wedding. But I felt like some of the joy was stripped away from us because of this whole drama with my ex. But nonetheless, I felt really special on that day. My first marriage was rushed because I got pregnant. But this one felt right. I got to wear a gown and walk down the aisle. My daughters also enjoyed it a lot. I was glad my husband Ben was there with me. I always had this insecurity in me that no man would want to be with me because I have so much baggage. But he stuck with me at my worst. As for my ex, he is lost. He has been sending me and my husband some hateful messages. He has been badmouthing me. We blocked him. Two days before my wedding, my ex-in-laws had a chat with me. My ex-mill wanted me to drop the case and not take their grandkids away from their father. But I am glad my ex-Phil stuck with me. He said that his own son is a danger to himself and his kids. He should not be allowed kids at all. My ex-mill tried to argue, but my ex-Phil shouted at her. Do you care more about your pathetic son or the safety of your grandkids? At least someone gets it. And then there is my ex's wife, who has moved out of his house because she said, and I quote, I am too good to be the stepmother of some ungrateful brats. I mean she is still in her twenties, so I get her in some way. Also, some of you have asked why I booked a day that clashes with my custody date. Well the venue we wanted was available on that day only. We had already postponed our wedding once due to my pregnancy, so we took it. Also, I didn't think my ex would go bonkers over it. Because when he got married to his mistress, he took our girls out of the state for two weeks because he wanted a destination wedding. And I checked with him numerous times before making the decision. He was fine with it until two weeks before the wedding. I have no idea why he was acting like that. And I know people have called me a bad mother for not noticing it earlier. I have no excuse for that. I know I have been consumed so much by my own world that I didn't thoroughly check with my girls. My kids shouldn't feel like sharing their problems will hamper my life because their problem is my problem. I said sorry to both Emily and Gaby for it. They were kind enough to forgive me. But I will always have this guilt that I didn't see it first. Relevant comment from OP when I asked her if her ex's wife contacted her. No. She actually sent me an email saying my girls are spoiled and she is too good to be the stepmother of a couple of brats. Third story. OP wants divorce because her husband didn't do any housework. My husband 40M and I 39F have been married for 12 years, together for 13. We are in a wonderful marriage overall. However, I typically end up with the brunt of housework, cooking, errands, laundry, and early morning wake-ups with the youngest of our two boys 6 and 13, even on Saturdays and Sundays. I also spend a lot of time cleaning up behind my husband because he forgets to do things. Because of this, I usually end up with almost no free time, and I never get to be the one who sleeps in. A lot of the things he forgets are small things like leaving shoes out in the walkway or leaving the lint from the lint trap on top of the dryer instead of throwing it away or continuing to put trash in an already full trash can, used glasses left out instead of brought to the sink, used wash rags left on the shower floor, etc. It sounds petty, but over time, all these little things have taken a lot of time out of my life to clean up after a grown-up when I'm already cleaning up after two non-grown-ups. I own a business and I'm working on my degree on top of all of this so I have very little spare time as it is. He, on the other hand, works from home and is able to sleep in, take nap breaks, play video games on his lunch break, and take an hour or two every evening while I study to play video games again to decompress. He does give me time to go to the gym or run, but I've been skipping it more and more to try to keep up with the mess and chores at home. When I bring it up, he says I'm being unfair because I'm focusing on the few times 
he forgets to pick up after himself, and not seeing all the things he does do. He does clean up after himself about 50% of the time, depending on what it is. But something he legitimately never does, like leaving lint on the dryer or throwing away used toilet paper rolls, he also suffers from a sleep disorder, which can make a person feel foggy sometimes. He says, I should be more compassionate with him and accept this as part of loving someone with a chronic illness. The truth is that I do understand what chronic illness is like, and I do have compassion. I myself have been living with chronic pain and fatigue for years, and am finally undergoing the diagnostic and treatment process for lupus and RA. I'm always in pain and constantly exhausted, but I muscle through and maintain a reasonable level of order and sanitation in my home, because that's what adults do for their kids. I don't have the luxury to forget to do important things like laundry, dishes, or cleaning, because then no one does it. He also says I have an unreasonably high standard of cleanliness. Really, I feel like not wanting to leave urine stains around the base of the toilet, or leaving used dishes and food on counters in an area notorious for roaches, is not having a high standard. I feel like his standards are lower than those of the average adult, as most people would find that pretty gross. One of the things my journey through aid has taught me is to learn to say no. Although I love my husband and best friend dearly, I don't see this ever changing unless he is literally forced. I am starting to feel like taking myself out of the equation is the best option to maintain my own sanity by having one less person to clean up after and find some much-needed downtime through shared custody. Even if he only had the kids one day a week, I feel like sharing custody might force him to hold himself to a reasonable standard of hygiene and cleanliness too. I definitely enable his laziness out of necessity to meet basic, safe levels of cleanliness. Without me there, he'd have to learn to be consistent or risk losing visitation. This is my only complaint about the marriage. We really do love and care for each other, and he's emotionally very kind and supportive. I love him very much. Wibta for divorcing over this. Update for info. One yes. We have talked about it. A lot. We have had the same fight at least once every other week for over a decade. Two. We tried counseling. Nothing changed. Even after our therapist told him that even though he was loving and supportive, resentment was a marriage killer, she suggested a maid service. 3. He does not want to spend money on a cleaning service. I would love to have weekly cleanings. I was able to talk him into one cleaning per month. I am working on increasing my earning potential so I can afford it myself. 4. Yes, he has been diagnosed with ADHD. I feel like this is a potent 4 yes, he has been diagnosed with ADHD. Explanation not excuse thing though. 5. I know divorce is expensive, but I have a very supportive family and am very close to expanding my business and attaining degrees that would allow me to be autonomous. That being said, we care a lot about each other, parent well together, and have a lot that we've built together. Update for the current situation. We fought about it, and I ended up ugly crying partially out of frustration and partially because I'd been up since 4.45 a.m. with the youngest. I told him that it was about lint on the washer and toilet rolls on the sink, but not really. I said that I felt like he didn't listen or care to try. We apologized, wrapped me up in our duvet, and left me to nap while he took over housework and kids he is really sweet and does try. It's been nice to have a day off. But I'm still skeptical because this isn't the first time I've gotten to a point of walking away or being really upset, and he is extra nice for a while only to go right back to being his old self in a few days. I guess we'll see. Update. Hello all. Where do I even begin? First, I want to thank everyone who chimed in. It really helped me feel validated in my frustration and process it. So after the meltdown on the day of the last post, he did as promised and took over the housework and kids for the day. However, as I feared, by the next day, he had returned to his old, dismissive, chauvinistic self. He did zero housework for the rest of the week, and picking up the slack ended up putting me in a position of unpreparedness for a very important test due tomorrow. This is his usual MO, he puts in effort just long enough to make me think he has changed, then he reverts, starting Sunday. I reminded him frequently that I needed time to study. It's a math test, and it's hard. So my plan was to study two hours per day, and be prepared by Friday. This meant he would need to pick up at least a little slack, giving baths, reading bedtime stories etc. So I could focus. Except it didn't happen. So, I ended up using the time I needed to study to cook, clean, and do laundry. Now it's late on the eve of the test, and I've had all of one hour of study time. I'm exhausted, and I can't even fathom practicing proportions or quadratic equations right now. I broke down out of frustration and told him I couldn't handle it anymore. I run my business, bust my butt in school, and keep everything running. 
It's a major unfair burden, and I'm tired of trying to make him care. I asked him how it was that he could treat his female co-workers as equals and not extend that same respect to me. He admitted to being a hypocrite and stormed off to play video games. Right now, I'm contemplating taking incompletes for the semester so I can focus on my business and weather a messy divorce from a giant man. Relevant comments. Randomwit. Like for a weekend. You will have pests overrunning your home within a weekend if you prioritize your studies over cleaning. And your husband would happily allow your home to be overrun with pests, OP replied. Because of the way my courses are structured, I have to study both on weeknights and on weekends. Yes. The home we bought is a century-old home being renovated in a neighborhood where roaches move in very quickly. Certain species live outdoors but come in at night if they smell food. And unless you live in a vacuum-sealed bubble, they find ways in even through water pipes. Those are the thumb-sized ones that jump and fly. We have managed thus far to avoid indoor dwelling varieties like German roaches by keeping counters and dishes clean, keeping laundry off the floor, and taking the trash out every night. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.